Heading southwest from the DPRK's capital, Pyongyang, following the path of the Taedong River, you'll hit the port city of Nampo. Just beyond Nampo sits one of the DPRK's most significant engineering mega-projects, an enormous dam stretching 8 kilometers across the Taedong River, where it meets the sea. To the West Sea Barrage. The West Sea Barrage. The West Sea Barrage is a highlight on any tourist visit to Nampo and serves simultaneously as a railway bridge, dam, lock and road bridge. On top of that, it's an important symbol of pride for the country as the five-year-long project between 1981 and 1986 undertaken by the Korean People's Army is considered a major achievement in domestic engineering. But why build a huge dam just downriver from a key international port which would still need to cater to international cargo traffic? Let's start at the beginning. Korea is a peninsula, bordered by the sea on both sides. To the east is the East Sea of Korea, also known as the Sea of Japan by the Japanese. But it's the western side we're most interested in, the West Sea of Korea, or Yellow Sea. The Taedong River flows into Korea Bay, part of the West Sea, and is one of Korea's most significant waterways, along with, in the far north, the Amnokgang, between Mount Pektu and Sinaju, and the Chumen River between Mount Pektu and Najin, both of which serve as international borders between Korea, China and Russia. The Taedong River, however, sits at the heart of the nation's capital, Pyongyang, and is therefore potentially the country's most famous. The river flows from the Nangnim mountain range in northern Korea, through the mountains and into Pyongyang, where it passes many of the DPRK's most famous monuments and sites. From here, it continues downstream past the industrial port city of Songnim, where a lot of commercial traffic stops, and then further on to the major international port of Nampo, where it flows into Korea Bay. South of Pyongyang, the river serves as the border between South Pyongan province and South Huanghe province. So, why did the government decide to dam the river? Well, there were three primary goals in the construction of the West Sea Barrage. Firstly, raising the water level on the inland side of the dam would allow larger vessels to dock at Nampo, which isn't situated directly on the sea, but slightly inland. Secondly, damming the mouth of the river meant the quasi-reservoir which was created behind the dam would be a source of fresh water, an important commodity both for sustaining large cities as well as for farming. Thirdly, the fresh water could then be pumped into surrounding areas, already dedicated primarily to agriculture, in order to irrigate the fields. These areas surrounding the dam are some of Korea's flattest regions, making them ideal for agriculture. Much of the country is dominated by mountains, making farming tricky. So most of South Wanghe, North Wanghe and South Pyongan are used for agriculture, hence the importance of good irrigation. On top of all these reasons, a dam over the Taedong would connect the city of Nampo with the northern tip of South Huanghe, cutting journey times by road and rail significantly. So, in 1981, with all these reasons in mind, construction began. The construction of the barrage was split into two sections. The most complex section was to sit between the south bank and Pido, a small island in the middle of the river. The vast majority of the dam would run between Pido and the northern riverbank. The construction teams built what's called a coffer dam around the intended construction area. This was achieved by dropping huge 1,500 ton metal cylinders into the water to create a sealed off area between the riverbank and the island. The water in this area was then pumped out, creating a dry construction zone for the workers. For the remaining section, an earthen dam was built, as concrete and sand were poured into the river. Construction on this section started simultaneously from both sides, intending to meet in the middle. Meanwhile, safely confined within the coffer dam, the concrete sluice gates and lock system were constructed. The West Sea Barrage has 36 sluice gates to control the flow of water from the river out into the sea, and three locks which allow ships to travel through the barrage. Eventually, the coffer dam was destroyed, 
allowing the water to once again flow in and hide the vast majority of the construction work beneath the waves. As the main dam neared completion, the water speed increased dramatically. By the time the gap was 60 metres wide, the water speed had increased up to 20 metres per second. Eventually, the earthen dam was complete, and the entirety of the Taelong River was only able to flow through the 36 sluice gates, allowing engineers to control the flow of water out of the river mouth and into the sea. The dam was outfitted to include a road and rail link between the two riverbanks. In June 1986, the Sohei Kamun Line, or West Sea Barrage Line, was opened, linking the two sides for the first time. You can find out more about that in my Korean State Railway video. As part of the bridge construction, a huge swing bridge was installed over two of the locks, allowing for road and rail traffic to cross when cargo ships were not traversing the lock system. The construction of the barrage is hailed in the DPRK as a major engineering achievement and took incredible amounts of natural resources to construct. Overall, building the dam took... Well, I'll let this guy explain. The project consumed tens of millions of cubic meters of gravels and sand, 280,000 tons of steel, 1,100,000 tons of cement, 500 tons of non-ferrous metals and other materials in enormous quantity, which amounts to $4 billion. The Taedong River has long been an important symbol in the DPRK. Neolithic settlements have sprung up along its banks, and it gave birth to the city of Pyongyang. It's also a vital transport waterway, and almost an artery running from the West Sea deep into the mountainous north. However, with the construction of the barrage, the river gained even more meaning. Since 1986, the barrage has featured on banknotes, TV news backdrops, and documentaries, both foreign and domestic. The barrage is a major tourist attraction for foreigners visiting Nampo, and has allowed the city to become a major international port on the West Sea, along with the city of Heiju to the south, and the cities of Wonsan, Hamhung, and Chongjin on the east coast. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at one of Korea's boldest engineering projects. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. The barrage construction, which had started in May 1981, was at last completed in June 1986.